The Georgian Apostolic Autocephalous Orthodox Church Georgian, Sakartvelos Samitsakulo Avtokopalari Martelmedidabeli Ecclesia Translate, Sakartvelos Samitsakulo Avt. OK. Epalari Martelmedidabeli Ek. Lesya is an autocephalous Eastern Orthodox Church in full communion with the other churches of Eastern Orthodoxy. It is Georgia's dominant religious institution, and a majority of Georgian people are members. The Georgian Orthodox Church is one of the oldest churches in the world. It asserts apostolic foundation, and its historical roots must be traced to the early and late Christianization of Iberia and Colchis by St. Andrew in the 1st century of New Era and by St. Nino in the 4th century AD, respectively. As in similar autocephalous Orthodox churches, the Church's highest governing body is the Holy Synod of Bishops. The Church is headed by the Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia, currently Ilya II, who was elected in 1977. Orthodox Christianity was the state religion throughout most of Georgian history until 1921, when it was conquered by the Russian Red Army during the Russian-Georgian War and became part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR. .The current Constitution of Georgia recognizes the special role of the Georgian Orthodox Church in the country's history, but also stipulates the independence of the Church from the state. Government relations are further defined and regulated by the Concordat of 2002. The Church is the most trusted institution in Georgia. According to a 2013 survey 95% respondents had a favorable opinion of its work. It is highly influential in the public sphere and is considered Georgia's most influential institution. History Origins <inaudible> 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 Topic. Topic. Traditions regarding Christianity's first appearance in Iberia and Colchis Topic. According to Georgian Orthodox Church tradition, the first preacher of the Gospel in Colchis and Iberia modern-day Western and Eastern Georgia was the Apostle Andrew, the first called. According to the official church account, Andrew preached across Georgia, carrying with him an Akiropoida of the Virgin Mary an icon believed to be created, not by human hand, and founded Christian communities believed to be the direct ancestors of the church. However, modern historiography considers this account mythical, and the fruit of a late tradition, derived from 9th-century Byzantine legends about the travels of St. Andrew in Eastern Christendom. Similar traditions regarding St. Andrew exist in Ukraine, Cyprus and Romania. Other apostles claimed by the Church to have preached in Georgia include Simon the Canaanite better known in the West as Simon the Zealot said to have been buried near Sokumi, in the village of Anacopia, and St. Matthias, said to have preached in the southwest of Georgia, and to have been buried in Gonio, a village not far from Batumi. The Church also claims the presence in Georgia of the apostles Bartholomew and Thaddeus, coming north from Armenia. Topic. The conversion of Kartli Topic. The propagation of Christianity in present-day Georgia before the 4th century is still poorly known. The first documented event in this process is the preaching of St. Nino and its consequences, although exact dates are still debated. St. Nino, honored as equal to the Apostles, was according to tradition the daughter of a Roman general from Cappadocia. She preached in the Kingdom of Iberia also known as Kartli in the first half of the 4th century, and her intercession eventually led to the conversion of King Mirian III, his wife Queen later Saint Nana and their family. Cyril Tumanov dates the conversion of Mirian to 334, his official baptism and subsequent adoption of Christianity as the official religion of Iberia to 337. From the 1st century CE, the cult of Mithras, pagan beliefs, and Zoroastrianism were commonly practiced in Georgia. However, they now started to gradually decline, even despite Zoroastrianism becoming a second established religion of Iberia after the Peace of Asilocene in 378, and more precisely by the mid-5th century, the royal baptism and organization of the church were accomplished by priests sent from Constantinople by Constantine the Great. Conversion of the people of Kartli proceeded quickly in the plains, but pagan beliefs long subsisted in mountain regions. 
The Western Kingdom of Egrisi was politically and culturally distinct from Kartli at that time, and culturally more integrated into the Roman Empire. Some of its cities already had bishops by the time of the First Council of Nicaea. 325. Topic. Expansion and transformation of the Church Topic. The conversion of Kartli marked only the beginnings of the formation of the Georgian Orthodox Church. In the next centuries, different processes took place that shaped the Church, and gave it, by the beginning of the 11th century, the main characteristics that it has retained until now. Those processes concern the institutional status of the Church inside Eastern Christianity, its evolution into a national Church with authority over all of Georgia, and the dogmatic evolution of the Church. The long path to autocephaly in the 4th and 5th centuries, the Church of Kartli was strictly subordinate to the Apostolic See of Antioch. All bishops were consecrated in Antioch before being sent to Iberia. Around 480, in a step towards autocephaly, the Patriarch of Antioch Peter the Fuller elevated the Bishop of Mts Keta to the rank of Catholicos of Kartli with the approval, or at the instigation, of the Byzantine Emperor Zeno. The Church remained subordinate to the Antioch Church, the Catholicos could appoint local bishops, but until the 740s, his own election had to be confirmed by the Synod of the Church of Antioch, and even after the 8th century, annual payments were made to the Church of Antioch. In 1010, the Catholicos of Kartli was elevated to the honor of Patriarch. From then on, the premier hierarch of the Georgian Orthodox Church carried the official title of Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia. Territorial expansion and birth of a national church At the beginnings of the church history, what is now Georgia was not unified yet politically, and would not be until the beginnings of the 11th century. The western half of the country, mostly constituted of the Kingdom of Lazica, or Egrisi, was under much stronger influence of the Byzantine Empire than eastern Kartli, where Byzantine, Armenian and Persian influences coexisted. Such division was reflected in major differences in the development of Christianity. In the east, from the conversion of Mirian, the church developed under the protection of the kings of Iberia, or Kartli. A major factor in the development of the church in Kartli was the introduction of the Georgian alphabet. The impulse for a script adapted to the language of the local people stemmed from efforts to evangelize the population. A similar dynamic led to the creation of the Armenian alphabet. The exact origin of the script is still debated, but must have happened in the second half of the 4th century or the early 5th century. The introduction of monasticism, and its tremendous development, in Kartli in the 6th century encouraged both foreign cultural inputs and the development of local written works. From that moment, together with translations of the Bible, ecclesiastical literature in Georgian was produced in Kartli, most prominently biographies of saints, such as the Martyrdom of the Holy Queen Shushanik and the «Martyrdom of Saint Abo». Many of the saints from the first centuries of the church were not ethnic Georgians Shushanik was an Armenian princess, Abo an Arab, showing that the church had not yet acquired a strictly national character. This changed only during the 7th century, after the wide political and cultural changes brought about by the Muslim conquests. This new menace for local culture, religion, and autonomy, and the difficulties to maintain constant contact with other Christian communities, led to a drastic cultural change inside the church, which became for the first time ethnically focused. It evolved into a Kartvelian church. The bishops and Catholicos were now all ethnic Georgians, as were the saints whose lives were written from that period. In the western half of Georgia, ancient Colchis, which had remained under stronger Roman influence, local churches were under jurisdiction of the Patriarchate of Constantinople, and were culturally and linguistically Hellenistic. Bishops from the port cities took part in ecumenical councils, from the Council of Nicaea 325, together with those from the Byzantine territories. From the 6th century, those churches, whose language remained Greek, were headed by a metropolitan in Phasais. The integration of the Black Sea coastal regions into what came to be known as Georgia was a long process. A first step came with the Arab invasions of the 7th and 8th centuries, which mostly affected Kartli. Refugees, among them noblemen such as Archil of Kakheti, took shelter in the west, either in Abkhazia or Dauklarjeti, and brought there their culture. 
Such movements led to the progressive merge of Western and Eastern churches under the latter, as Byzantine power decreased and doctrinal differences disappeared. The Western Church broke away from Constantinople and recognized the authority of the Catholicos of Mts Keta by the end of the 9th century. Political unification under the Bagrationi dynasty consolidated this evolution by the end of the 10th century. In a single, unified Kingdom of Georgia, there would be a unified Georgian Church. Topic. Relations with the Armenian and Byzantine churches Topic. During the first centuries of Christianity, the South Caucasus was culturally much more united than in later periods, and constant interactions between what would become the Georgian and Armenian churches shaped both of them. The Armenian church was founded two decades earlier, and was during the fourth century larger and more influential than the church in Kartli. As such, it exerted strong influence in the early doctrine of the Church. The influence of the Church of Jerusalem was also strong, especially in liturgy. The Georgian-Armenian ecclesial relationship would be tested after the Council of Chalcedon 451, whose Christological conclusions were rejected by the Armenian Church and important portions of the Church of Antioch, as well as the Coptic Church based in Alexandria. At first, the Catholicoi of Kartli chose the anti-Chalcedonian camp together with the Armenians, even though diversity of opinions was always present among the clergy, and tolerated by the hierarchy. The king of Kartli, Vakhtang Gorgasali, who sought an alliance with Byzantium against the Persians, accepted the Henotikon, a compromise put forward by the Byzantine emperor Zeno in 482. Such conciliation was attempted again at the First Council of Dvin in 506, and the status quo was preserved during the 6th century. Around 600 however, tensions flared between the Armenian Apostolic Church and the Church in Kartli, as the Armenian Church attempted to assert prominence in the Caucasus, in both hierarchical and doctrinal matters, whereas the Catholicos of Mts Keta, Kyrian I, leaned towards the Byzantine, Chalcedonian side of the debate, as Kartli was once again seeking imperial support against the Sassanid Empire, who had abolished the kingdom in 580. The Third Council of Dvin, in 607, sanctioned the rupture with the Armenian Church. The following centuries confirmed the Byzantine orientation of the Georgian Church, and its estrangement from the Armenian Church. Confessional disputes remained impossible to overcome, and were a staple of theological literature in both areas. The integration of Western and Eastern Georgian churches from the 9th century also sealed the orthodox nature of the Georgian church, as Byzantine liturgy and cultural forms spread to the detriment of traditional Oriental practice. The church during the Golden Age of Georgia between the 11th and the early 13th centuries, Georgia experienced a political, economical and cultural golden age, as the Bagrationi dynasty managed to unite western and eastern halves of the country into a single kingdom. To accomplish that goal, kings relied much on the prestige of the church, and enrolled its political support by giving it many economical advantages, immunity from taxes and large appanages. At the same time, the kings, most notably David the Builder 1089 used state power to interfere in church affairs. In 1103, he summoned the Council of Rusi Urbnisi, which condemned Armenian Miaphysitism in stronger terms than ever before, and gave unprecedented power, second only to the Patriarch, to his friend and advisor George of Shkandidi. For the following centuries, the church would remain a crucial feudal institution, whose economical and political power would always be at least equal to that of the main noble families. Topic: <laughs> Cultural influence of Christianity in medieval Georgia. Topic: During the Middle Ages, Christianity was the central element of Georgian culture. The development of a written Georgian culture was made possible by the creation of the Georgian alphabet for evangelization purposes. Monasticism played a major role in the following cultural transformation. It started in Georgia in the 6th century, when Assyrian ascetic monks, known as the Thirteen Assyrian Fathers, settled in Kartli and founded a series of monasteries, most notably David Gareja. They were soon joined by local monks, which led to the creation of significant works of hagiographic literature in Georgian, such as the Life of Saint Nino and the Martyrdom of the Holy Queen Shushanik. The Golden Age of Georgian monasticism lasted from the 9th to the 11th century. 
During that period, Georgian monasteries were founded outside the country, most notably on Mount Sinai, Mount Athos the Iviron Monastery, where the Theotokos Iverskaya icon is still located, and in Palestine. The most prominent figure in the history of Georgian monasticism is judged to be Gregory of Konsta who founded numerous communities in Dauklarjeti. Specific forms of art were developed in Georgia for religious purposes. Among them, calligraphy, polyphonic church singing, cloisonné enamel icons, such as the Kakuli triptych, and the Georgian cross dome style of architecture, which characterizes most medieval Georgian churches. The most celebrated examples of Georgian religious architecture of the time include the Gelati Monastery and Bagrati Cathedral in Kutaisi, the Akalto Monastery Complex and Academy, and the Svetitskaveli Cathedral in Mts Keta. Outstanding Georgian representatives of Christian culture include Peter the Iberian Petra Iberielli, 5th century, Eutymius of Athos EKV time Atonli, 955-1028, George of Athos Georgi Atonli, 1009-1065, Arsene Ecoltelli 11th century, and Ephraim M. T. Sire, 11th century. Philosophy flourished between the 11th and 13th century, especially at the Academy of Gelati Monastery, where Owain Petritsi attempted a synthesis of Christian, Aristotelian and Neoplatonic thought. The division of the Church 13th, 18th centuries. The invasions of Genghis Khan in the 13th century and Tamerlane in the 14-15th century greatly disrupted Georgian Christianity. The political unity of the country was broken several times, and definitely in the 1460s. Churches and monasteries were targeted by the invaders, as they hosted many treasures. As a result of those devastations, many fell into disrepair or were abandoned. In the western half of Georgia, the Catholicate of Abkhazia was established following the Mongol rule. It seceded from the Mts Ketisi as the kingdom disintegrated, and the western Catholicos thereafter assumed the title of Patriarch. This rival seat, based first in Pitsunda, then at the Gelati Monastery near Kutaisi, subsisted until 1795. During those times, contacts with the Catholic Church increased, first as a way to liberate itself from meddling by the Byzantine Church, then to find stronger allies against invaders. Between 1328 and the early 16th century, a Catholic bishop had his see in Tbilisi to foster those contacts. However, formal reunion with Rome never happened, and the Church remained faithful to Eastern Orthodoxy. In the next centuries, Georgia, weakened and fragmented, fell under the domination of the Ottoman and successive Persian Safavid, Afsharid, and Qajar empires. Mostly, the Ottomans ruled the west of the country, the Persians the east, while generally allowing autonomous Georgian kingdoms to subsist under their control. With the fall of Constantinople in 1453, Georgian Christians had lost their traditional recourse against Muslims, and were left to themselves. New martyrs were canonized by the Church after each invasion, most notably Queen Ketavan of Kakheti, who was tortured to death in 1624 for refusing to renounce Christianity on the orders of Abbas I of Persia Shah Abbas. Not all members of the royal families of Kartli and Kakheti were so faithful to the Church, though. Many of them, to gain Persian favor, and win the throne over their brothers, converted to Islam, or feigned to, such as David XI of Kartli Other noblemen, such as Sulkan Saba Orbeliani, left the weakened local church for Catholicism, as missionaries were bringing the printing press and Western culture to Georgia around 1700. Only the emergence of a strong Orthodox power, the Russian Empire, could reinforce during the 18th century the status and prestige of the Church among the elites, and the shared Orthodoxy was a potent factor in the calls for Russian intervention in the Caucasus, to liberate Georgia from Muslim domination. The Church under Russian and Soviet rule in 1801, the Kingdom of Kartal Kakheti Eastern Georgia was occupied and annexed by the Russian Empire. On 18 July 1811, the autocephalous status of the Georgian Church was abolished by the Russian authorities, despite strong opposition in Georgia, and the Georgian Church was subjected to the synodical rule of the Russian Orthodox Church. From 1817, the Metropolitan Bishop, or Exarch, in charge of the Church was an ethnic Russian, with no knowledge of the Georgian language and culture. 
The Georgian liturgy was suppressed and replaced with Church Slavonic, ancient frescoes were whitewashed from the walls of many churches, and publication of religious literature in Georgian heavily censored. The 19th century was a time of decline and disaffection, as the church buildings often fell into disrepair, and the trust of people in the institution was diminished by its russification and corruption. Calls for autocephaly became heard again only after the intellectual national revival that started in the 1870s. The local clergy made such calls during the 1905 revolution, before being repressed again. Following the overthrow of the Tsar Nicholas II in March 1917, Georgia's bishops unilaterally restored the autocephaly of the Georgian Orthodox Church on 25 March 1917. These changes were not accepted by the Russian Orthodox Church. After the Red Army invasion of Georgia in 1921, the Georgian Orthodox Church was subjected to intense harassment. Hundreds of churches were closed by the atheist government and hundreds of monks were killed during Joseph Stalin's purges. The independence of the Georgian Orthodox Church was finally recognized by the Russian Orthodox Church on 31 October 1943. This move was ordered by Stalin as part of the wartime more tolerant policy towards Christianity in the Soviet Union. New anti religious campaigns took place after the war, especially under Nikita Khrushchev. Corruption and infiltration by the security organs were also plaguing the Church. First signs of revival can be seen from the 1970s, when Eduard Shevardnadze, then secretary of the Georgian SSR's Communist Party, adopted a more tolerant stance, and new patriarch Ilya II could from 1977 renovate derelict churches, and even build new ones. At the same time, nationalist dissidents such as Zviad Gamsakhurdia emphasized the Christian nature of their struggle against communist power, and developed relations with church officials that would come to fruition after 1989. Present-day status On 3 March 1990, the Patriarch of Constantinople recognized and approved the autocephaly of the Georgian Orthodox Church which had in practice been exercised or at least claimed since the 5th century, as well as the patriarchal honor of the Catholicos. Georgia's subsequent independence in 1991 saw a major revival in the fortunes of the Georgian Orthodox Church. The special role of the Church in the history of the country is recognized in the Article 9 of the Constitution of Georgia. Its status and relations with the state were further defined in the Constitutional Agreement, or Concordat, signed by President of Georgia Eduard Shevardnadze and Patriarch Ilya II on 14 October 2002. The Concordat notably recognizes church ownership of all churches and monasteries, and grants it a special consultative role in government, especially in matters of education. Many churches and monasteries have been rebuilt or renovated since independence, often with help from the state or wealthy individuals. The church has enjoyed good relations with all three presidents of Georgia since independence was restored. However, tensions subsist within the church itself regarding its participation in the ecumenical movement, which Patriarch Ilya II had endorsed he served as head of the World Council of Churches between 1977 and 1983. Opposition to ecumenism was fueled by fears of massive proselytizing by Protestant denominations in Georgia. In 1997, faced with open dissension from leading monks, Ilya II rescinded church participation in international ecumenical organizations, though he stopped short of denouncing ecumenism as heresy. Opposition against Protestant missionary activity has remained strong in contemporary Georgia, and even led to episodes of violence. Separatism in Abkhazia has also affected the church. The Eparchy of Sokomi, regrouping Abkhaz clergy, proclaimed in 2009 its secession from the Georgian Orthodox Church to form a new Abkhazian Orthodox Church. This move remained, however, unrecognized by any other Orthodox authorities, including the Russian Orthodox Church. The relations with the neighboring Armenian Apostolic Church have also been uneasy since independence, notably due to various conflicts about church ownership in both countries. 83.9% of Georgia's population identified themselves as Orthodox in the 2002 census. In 2002, it was reported that there were 35 eparchies dioceses and about 600 churches within the Georgian Orthodox Church, served by 730 priests. The Georgian Orthodox Church has around 3,600,000 members within Georgia no sources attempt to count members among the Georgian diaspora. 
Topic Structure. Topic Topic Holy Synod. Topic The Georgian Orthodox Church is managed by the Holy Synod, headed by the Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia. The Holy Synod is the collective body of bishops of the Church. In addition to the Patriarch, the Synod comprises 38 members, including 25 Metropolitan Bishops, 5 Archbishops and 7 Simple Bishops. As of 2012, the following Bishops are members of the Holy Synod, in such hierarchical order. Metropolitan of Kutaisi and Jalati, Kalistratus Metropolitan of Chiachura and Sachikari, Daniel Dadishvili. Metropolitan of Western Europe, Abraham Garmalia. Metropolitan of Tianeti and P. Shavkevsareti, Tadeos Iaramishvili. Metropolitan of Manglisi and Salka, Ananya Japarides. Metropolitan of Margveti and UBC, Vakhtang Akladani. Metropolitan of Silkani and Dusheti, Zosimus Shioshvili. Metropolitan of Kibuli and Terjola, Georgi Shalambarides. Metropolitan of Urbnisi and Rusi, Job Akiashvili. Metropolitan of Alaverdi, David Makaraj. Metropolitan of Nekrezi, Sergios Chikorishvili. Metropolitan of Shimokmedi, Joseph Kikvids. Metropolitan of Nikosi and Skinvali, Isaiah Chantaria. Metropolitan of Boryomi and Bakuriani, Seraphim Jojua. Metropolitan of Nikortsminda, Elise Jokhadza. Metropolitan of Poti and Kobi, Grigori Burbachashvili. Metropolitan of Akalkalaki and Kumurdo, Nikolas Pachuashvili. Metropolitan of Akaltsik and Dauklarjeti, Theodore Chuadze. Metropolitan of Kony and Samtredia, Saba Gajaburia. Metropolitan of Batumi, Lizetti, North America and Canada, Dimitri Shialashvili. Metropolitan of Vani and Baghdati, Anton Buluhia. Metropolitan of Zugdidi and Saishi, Gerasimos Sherishinides. Metropolitan of Samtavisi and Gori, Andrea Gavazava. Metropolitan of Shkandidi and Martvili, Petra Sava. Metropolitan of Sanaki, Chikaratsku and Australia, Shio Mujiri. Archbishop of Sagari and Lenteki, Stepan Kalijashvili. Archbishop of Bodbi, David Tikaradza. Archbishop of Stepansminda and Kevi, Igudil Tabatadza. Archbishop of Rastavi and Marnuli, Oain Gamarakeli. Archbishop of Dimanisi, Agaric Tashiri, Great Britain and Ireland, Zenon Iarajuli. Bishop of Mestia and Upper Svaneti, Alarian Kitiashvili. Bishop of Gurjani and Velistsik, Utimos Lezava. Bishop of Ninisminda and Sagarejo, Luca Lomides. Bishop of Skalta, Spiridon Abuladze. Bishop of Bolnisi, Ephraim Gamerclides. Bishop of Dadoplistskaro and Hereti, Melchisedek Kachids. Bishop of Gardabani and Markkopi, Jacob Ikobashvili. Bishop of Sarami and Kishori, Svimian Sakashvili. Topic: Catholicos Patriarch of All Georgia. Topic: the first head bishop of the Georgia Church to carry the title of Patriarch was Melchizedek I 1010 Since 1977, Ilya II born in 1933 has served as the Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia and Archbishop of Mts Keta and Tbilisi. Here is a list of the Catholicos Patriarchs since the Church restored autocephaly in 1917, Kyrian II, 1917-1918, Ambrose, 1921-1927, Christophorus III, 1927-1932, 1932-1952, Melchizedek III, 1952-1960, Ephraim II, 1960-1972, David V, 1972 to 1977 Ilya 2 1977 present topic see also topic secularism and irreligion in Georgia Christianity in Georgia culture of Georgia Georgian Byzantine Rite Catholics Georgian Catholic Church Georgian churches in Armenia religion in Georgia topic references topic topic works cited topic rap Stephen H jr 2007 Georgian Christianity the Blackwell companion to Eastern Christianity 
John Wiley and Sons. pp. 137-155. ISBN 978-1-4443-3361-9. Retrieved the 11th of May 2012. Gerdza Lides, Tamara 2011. Georgia, Patriarchal Orthodox Church of. In John Anthony McGuckin. The Encyclopedia of Eastern Orthodox Christianity. John Wiley and Sons. pp. 264-275. ISBN 978-1-4051-8539-4. Retrieved 13 May 2012. Megaloblishvili, Tamila Ancient Christianity in the Caucasus. Psychology Press. ISBN 978-0-7007-0633-4. Retrieved 20 May 2012. Tumanov, Cyril 1963. Iberia between Chosroid and Bagratid rule. Studies in Christian Caucasian history. Georgetown UP. Retrieved 30 June 2012. <laughs> External links Topic. Official website of the Patriarchate of the Georgian Orthodox Church Georgian language website regarding Georgian Orthodoxy Georgian Orthodox Church, Encyclopedia Britannica Georgian Orthodox Churches in USA Article on the Georgian Orthodox Church by Ronald Roberson on the CNEWA website